There was a great and mighty ship. Poseidon was her name. She had a well-known history, a legendary fame. She was a treat for presidents, a masterpiece to royals. No other liner matched the speed she held within her boilers. On New Year's Eve, one fateful night, she was on her last crossing before they towed her to the yards and cut her up to nothing. The ground shook with violent rage, somewhere not far from Crete. It seemed as if a sea monster awakened to go eat. The sea shook as if in a glass, and a great wave soon rose. The terror of the startled crew, nobody but them knows. It was only six passengers who made it towards salvation. But this the truth. Poseidon's tale has a continuation. At midnight, during New Year's Eve, a small tugboat was sailing. She'd lost her cargo in the storm, which at the time was raging. And somewhere not too far from there, Poseidon also steamed. The ship's fate was disastrous. The losses were extreme. At dawn of January 1st, the tug's desperate captain, who, after losing his great loot, was angry quite enough time, could not believe his startled eyes, for once the sun was full, he saw in his binoculars a giant capsized hull. A four-star ocean liner, had suffered some great fate, but for the captain of the tug, she was a treasure bait. This is our chance. We have been saved, one of the crewmen said. We better leave, said someone else, before we end up dead. And they were right, for just right then, the hull was set in motion. The crippled ship was shaken up by a mighty explosion. Did you all hear? A woman said. She'll blow up any minute. If we can die in there, then I don't care if money is in it. But while they were all arguing about what to do, upon the now calm sea, another ship came into view. Who are you? The tug's captain yelled, a megaphone in hand. Do not approach. We were here first. Leave now. You understand? Good morning, sir, the captain of the other vessel said. Please hear me out. There really is no cause for your great dread. My name is Stephen Zvevo, and this here is my crew. We're Greek Orthodox doctors, and we have all the proof. This here is the Poseidon. She called for help tonight, and we received her signal. Oh, what a dreadful sight. We don't need any money. We're not here for the gold. We're looking for survivors before the time runs cold. And so the teams agreed to operate as one, descending into the great hole, forgetting all the fun. Because as soon as they came through the hole that had been left, a fan fell down and closed it off. As panic slowly crept, they all moved on, having no choice, and found some more people, a veteran and the ship's nurse, who helped out as needed. Another woman was there, too, and her name was Suzanne. They all claimed, we're surviving here, just any way we can. The veteran, a worried man, was looking for his daughter. He feared that she, like hundreds more, had perished in the water, but she was found alive and well, and others too were fine. An elevator handling man, a rich man who liked wine. Still later, on upturned high decks, they came across two others, a blind man and his loyal wife, who wouldn't leave each other. We have decided to stay here, 
they told them in one voice. We fear to know what's out there. We're sure we have no choice. We thought we'd rather die right here, right in each other's arms, when yesterday at midnight they sounded the alarms. But now, a miracle from God, how did you know, we ask you, that there were two people like us awaiting to be rescued? The group moved on, all bonded now, all craving to see daylight. And as they did, water crawled up. Poseidon's strength was failing. Her trembling hull let out screams. Her funnel spit out fire. To make sure they got out alive, the group had to climb higher. The tugboat's captain and his crew found the purser's office, while Stephen Swivel and his men brought up some different offers. They parted ways and went away, just as another blast made the Poseidon shake again. Our heroes' hearts beat fast. And their excitement didn't die. They shouted out with joy. The blast revealed inside a safe a great loot of gold coins. There also were some diamonds and money, all in cash. The captain got excited over this amazing stash. However, they did not know that Suzanne, who had come with them, was part of a malicious plan, and their fates had been written. And Captain Svevo gave Suzanne some quite surprising orders. A cargo manifest to bring right from the purser's office. And yes, she surely did all this, but guilt soon took her over. And she told Svevo when they met, I'm sorry, but it's over. Svevo just smiled at her a bit, as if he didn't need her, and then he sent a man of his to go ahead and kill her. But it was her who killed him first and had a fit of madness before her wounds made her, too, plunge right into the darkness. As the tug's crew, climbing up decks, discovered Suzanne dead, they realized a criminal was there and had not fled. That is when Captain Svevo gave them a great reveal. Everything we have told you is a fairy tale, not real. We're not here for survivors, but neither for the gold. There is another reason we came to this old boat. On this last fateful voyage, Poseidon, grand but old, a cargo of plutonium was carrying below. That cargo is what I came for, and trust me, it's no fun. For since I have told you, silence comes for you all, one by one. But just as he finished his speech, Poseidon shook again, reminding them that she will sink, but never tell you when. As smoke and fire blasted out of the Poseidon's funnels, the tugboat's crew escaped the crooks through corridors and tunnels. They soon found some weapons, too, and started self-defense, defeating some of Svevo's men, calling death to a dance. The blind man's wife, who had been hurt, while helping him in danger, tragically drowned and thus reached the end of her adventure. Trying to help, the tugboat's captain lost the gold he had, but it was the poor woman's death that made him truly sad. And while his group tried to move on to save remaining lives, Captain Svevo had a great excitement in his eyes. Men from his crew were lifting the plutonium to light. They took it out from the hole, but things didn't seem quite right. 
The ship was sinking. It was slow, but they needed to hurry, which soon replaced enthusiasm with fear, anger, and worry. At that same time, the tugboat group found diving equipment, but it was not enough to save all those by whom it was needed. To save the team, the captain's mate hid in a distant corner and swam away not to be seen into the silent waters. His sacrifice was noble and worth it just as well, for soon the crew got out of their sinking prison cell. As they climbed on the tugboat, a battle soon ensued, for Svevo and his men wanted to end them all for good. The rich man, who was just a fraud and was the ship's wine taster, held up a bottle and was shot, his final strength now tested. Poseidon kept on trembling, her boilers way too old. A terrible disaster was about to unfold. The captain of the tugboat was now aboard his ship, surviving crewmates by his side. Their safety he would keep. Now, as for Zvevo and his men, greed was about to win, until a loud and roaring sound erupted from below. Each man who had evil within to flee tried very hard, but it was way too late for them. The ship was blown apart. The tugboat crew, about then, was sailing all together, knowing they would remember what they've been through forever. Just then, all of a sudden, a woman who'd been there made their captain excited with happiness to spare. As everyone was cheering just for getting out alive, she showed them a small diamond that shone under the light. And so they learned a lesson that no one should forget. One has to give with a pure heart not just expect to get. For he whose soul is filled with greed, whose heart is filled with hatred, instead of riches and good life, will get a different payment. But those who sacrifice themselves for the true good of others will get the things that they deserve, in spirit and in matter.